guys, it's your girl, Noah Benzi, and I am back with a very long awaited video. <laughs> I um, asked you guys about a little over a month ago when I posted my um, Black Lives Matter video and everything, um, what are some changes that you guys want to see? What are some, what are some things that you want to see? go down from this in the adult industry itself. Um, hi. <laughs> for those of you who don't know me, my name is Noah Benzi. I have been a cam model for a very, very long time now. I post videos about the adult industry, cam modeling, adult work in general, um, tips and tricks and branding and all that fun stuff. Uh, you can find it all on my page. But today, like I just said, we're going to talk about uh, something I just wanted, an open conversation um, that I literally was like, comment below. So we're going to get into that uh, right now. <laughs> so I'm going to be looking at my phone for a lot of this. I'm also going to be putting up the tweet that I'm responding to on the side um, so you can like read it for yourself and then but I have to read it on here. Some of these are just going to be read as just like true statements. I don't really have much to comment on it because I completely agree. Um, I want to, like I said, make this an open conversation even here, even in the comments. Um, so be careful what you say. Um, go into this with an open mind and an open heart. Uh, but definitely feel free to respond to any of these tweets um, on what you think uh, should change or happen, what you're doing. I also feel like this video is kind of good to post now, even though it wasn't intentional to post it this late, um, because it's already been like a few months into this movement now. So it's like, what have we been doing? What have we been thinking about? What conclusions, what answers have we come up with in this time period? Because it's not close to being over this movement and this work that needs to be done. This will, this will be a long time. So this is just the beginning of a very deep but open conversation. And I'm going to start with the first comment um, from Miss, if I say anyone's like names wrong, I apologize. Well, let me double check her name because I feel bad. Miss Kezia? Kiza? Again, I'm going to put up everybody's tweets. I apologize. Uh, she said, more representation. Get rid of race play. Get rid of abuse in the mainstream. Have more diversity than cis men on sets. More opportunities, especially for black sex workers. This is definitely one that I just completely agree with. That's just like a, an agreement statement. Um, for those of you who haven't, yeah, for those of you who haven't, seen um, my video about the problems with the adult industry regarding race. Um, I will put that video up here right now. You might want to go watch that first and um, then come back and hear some of these comments and stuff about it and get more into the conversation. Um, the only thing I do want to comment on is when I have people that aren't in the adult industry watch my videos. Um, they seem very shocked to, shocked and not shocked, to realize the amount of, um, I don't know how to put this lightly, so trigger warning, of uh, abuse that goes down in the industry itself. So I wouldn't say this industry was super, super abusive and ridiculous. Not everyone is a predator. It's not sleazy, like on that level, but, but in a big, but there has been a lot of issues with producers, other talent and stuff, taking advantage of people in a sexual way. Um, it is very unfortunate. It is very scary. It is, it feels very unexpected, and I know that there are outside people that are like, well, you're in sex work. What do you know? Because you're on a set, and you are you feel professional. You feel like you're in a professional environment. And for these things to happen is 
devastating, shocking, and just all around awful. And for a lot of the crimes that are committed behind the scenes, they are completely ignored by people that have attitudes similarly to like, well, you're on sex work, what do you expect kind of thing. Who do you go to when that's someone's attitude? Um, who do you seek help from? What if the person is super respected or famous or anything along those lines and you just feel like if you talk about it, you're not going to get work or you're not going to have enough people standing behind you. And it has brought a lot of people out of the woodwork, a lot of shamers and just it's been a very crazy ride there has been a lot of um me too movement situations going on within the industry and uh people defending the violators and it's just been it's been a lot um i'm not gonna get into it too much on this channel because it, first of all it's not my stories to tell but it's also very all over the place so like if you go on Twitter if you read Avian magazine Xbiz magazine things like that you're going to see articles and people talk about it and girls talk about it um, the videos the stories that I've seen and heard are heartbreaking a few of maybe literally break down and cry so I will give you like that warning um, it's awful it's absolutely awful and that's something that definitely needs to be fixed. I use that word in an, an exasperated way because it's like, how, how are you necessarily going to fix it? I think there just really needs to be a better support system in place and a better way of reporting these situations and having actual repercussions for these people who do these things. They shouldn't be in the business anymore. They shouldn't be around people anymore. I don't care if they're like the top producer of the top company. If they're hurting people and hurting their talents, they shouldn't be here. Like, we need to put a foot down. We need to be way more united. And it's just, it's upsetting because I don't know how that's going to come about. There's so many people that are defending predators and it's really sad and confusing and there's a lot of victim blaming so I don't I don't know what the remedy is for that but it's definitely something to think about and try to find a way to build these better systems so I'm gonna move on to the next Twitter response um, this one is from Toya. She said to have more representation as well of not just mix, but all shades from light to dark, as well as higher paid for all interracial and to promote black women and women of color equally in the way they do with YT girls. I assume she means like mainstream, like anyway, eliminate race play, el eliminate victims of sex trafficking and be respectful. Again, I 100% agree. Um, I said this in my, my video about um, this whole adult industry issue that being forced into like some type of tokenism to fill a quota is definitely not only pitting us as uh, adult models of color against each other in a way um, because we're all competing for like these tiny, tiny little niches of roles that we, it's ridiculous and definitely, definitely needs to be eliminated. And I, I got a really mean comment from this guy who was just so rude. I don't even want to like put up his comment. I don't even want to give him the time of day. I literally deleted it because it was just, it was just, it was vile. I, 
obviously he has issues and he's a racist. Um, but one of the biggest issues with this industry is this, you gotta just do it. Like you gotta, you gotta just, you gotta just cast more people of color in videos and just make those videos. And honestly, don't give those racists a choice. If they want to watch a video, they should just watch the video. What are you watching the video for? Are you watching the video to get off? Or are you watching the video to see a white person? Because that, that's, that's, a, that's a thought. That's a confusing situation. So I feel like the more that the companies themselves are like, hey, I'm just going to start just casting. doesn't matter. Um, as long as they're good, as long as they're like reliable, I'm just going to put these people in videos and not look at color. As long as they stop looking at color and just start casting normally, I would say, instead of being so nitpicky and making up these fake statistics and quotas, because they really are fake. Like you're telling models that are famous that have, oh my God, there's a moth in my room. It's so big. <laughs> it's making a noise when it hits the wall. Sorry. Oh my god, this is way too serious of a subject. To be sorry, I'm sorry. Anyway, what was I saying? You're telling models that have huge fan bases that have been doing this for years, that are super reliable and beautiful, and that just so happen to be Asian or just so happen to be black, that they won't sell. Like, that is so dumb. <laughs> like they're already famous they already have a huge fan base they already have more followers than some of the girls that you're casting yet you're not going to put them in a video and tell them what they won't sell who do you so i am confused this doesn't make sense it's sim it's very similar to when this video is definitely demonetized oh my god that bug i'm sorry um it's, it's very similar to when <laughs> the statistics for most popular like categories come out for different like um, websites, and it'll be like like girl girl or like lesbian will be like at the top. But then if you're a performer and you call up an agency and you're like, yeah, I just I'm kind of only into doing girl girl. They will fight you tooth and nail. And this is so inappropriate. And this is something that we can make a whole other video about. But they will fight you tooth and nail being like, oh, wouldn't you try it? What's your reasoning? Is it because you have a boyfriend? No, it's because I just want to do girl, girl. Like, why is that an issue? Why do I Why do I have to tell you now my business? Because I, I chose to do girl, girl. Like, that's what I want to do. And most of them will not take you on as a client if you decide to just be niche into like a girl girl category or something like that and it's absolutely ridiculous and a lie because like i said these statistics come out and usually girl girl lesbian is not like the like top three of searched and watched videos and it's it's just it's so dumb like i literally can't oh, just the excuses the excuses they're just like ridiculous <laughs> I can't. I'm not going to get into that. I can talk about that for like hours and I won't get into it. So back on Toya's comment um, about the whole like interracial situation and stuff. First of all, equal pay 100%. Everyone should be getting paid equally or at least based off of like their popularity and like who they are. Obviously somebody that's very seasoned and very popular that's like a household name in a way is going to get paid more than some like newer girl or like a random girl like you know what I mean or boy like guy or girl but when it comes to actual like like race should not be a factor in payment like I said you should be judged off of your talent and like your how reliable you are and how good you are in whatever scene you're in and that is what you should be getting paid off of how popular you are um, not getting paid less or more because of the color of your skin now there's a, we talked about this on Twitter in a separate um, thread that I'm not even going to look into right now. And this was also something that was mentioned in the Zoom call that I put in the other video. And that is like race play and interracial 
even like being a category, even being around. Some people are for it. Some people are against it. Um, I'm going to tell you not both sides, but just mainly why I'm against it. And I'm not saying anybody is right or wrong. This is just my opinion and my feelings on the matter. And that is, look, we're not living in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, or even the early 90s anymore. We're not living in that time period. It's not and shouldn't be a taboo to be with somebody that of a mixed or of a different race than you. I feel like most people are dating people of a different race. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. When I look around, I see everybody with everybody. I don't I, of course, you see a lot of, like, same race couples, but you also see a lot of just mixed couples. And it's not a weird thing. It's not a taboo anymore. We're not living in a time period where it's, like, a new fad. And I think that's where a lot of race play and, inter and the whole category of interracial came from. Because all of a sudden now we're allowed to be with each other as, as races, you know? And it's like, ooh, like interracial like look at that sexy black girl and that white guy or look at that sexy black guy and that, and that white girl like you know what I mean and it was a thing it was new it was something we haven't seen before you know and it was exciting and I feel like if we were back in the 60s and 70s like hell yeah interracial porn should be a thing because people need to see it you know but to, for it to be 2020 and it's still being categorized as a taboo and it's still like a thing it's just it puts a bad taste in my mouth I just don't feel like the more you segregate something the more it's going to be segregated I'll just leave it at that the more you pull something out and make it not normal it's never going to be normal you know so and 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 not to go off on a tangent but um it's kind of like an American thing like, uh, I forgot who said this. Oh, it's going to bother me now. In the Zoom meeting, though. Oh, man. Was it, Lex was it Lexington Steele? I think it was. He was like, it's not a, really a factor in, like, the UK. And I'm not saying the UK it doesn't have a race problem because it, it does. But it, it doesn't, like, they don't necessarily cast kind of like based off of that he was saying I don't know I'm just speaking from like what he said um so I don't know I just in general I just think it puts a bad taste in my mouth I just it kind of just like separates it from like the norm like why isn't it just normal like why are two white people the norm like that's just that's just, that's just supremacy. That's all, that's all I can say. That's just the truth of it all. Like, so I don't believe that it should be a thing anymore. I did like, um, again, in the Zoom meeting, um, what one of the models said about how it should just, instead of being like a taboo or something like that, it maybe can be like a side, like click the box category. Like you want to see interracial and stuff that I'm just kind of like, eh. Eh, because then you can still be fetishized for that. But then can you really stop being fetishized? Eh, I don't know. I hate it all. <laughs> I just don't like it. I don't know. That's just my opinion on it. Feel free to have a different opinion or your own opinion. I'm not saying you're right or wrong. It's just personally how I feel about it. Um, but yeah, I don't like it. I think it should just be like non-existent. <sighs> not to hang on Toya, but she wrote a couple of good things. So eliminating sex trafficking. That is a big one. That is a big thing. That is just a, that is a, that's almost like saying eliminating murder or eliminating pedophiles or something. Like when it comes down to it, all those words I'm going to get demonetized for every single one of them. <laughs> when it comes down to it, um, Sex trafficking is one of the many evils of this world, and it's something that is going to happen no matter, like, what we do, unfortunately. And I'm not really sure of how to fix that or what to do about that. Um, I will say, in regards to the adult industry, that 
these sites that host videos, um, all the different hubs and tubes that host adult videos need to do better in general, in a whole. They just need to do better. They need to do better checks. They need to do better checks with IDs and different things. There needs to be a better screening process. Um, the fact that anybody, anyone can just upload uh, CP videos or just forced videos in general, it doesn't even have to be CP, to the internet and even in some cases make it difficult for the people afterwards to take them down. There's been cases of people trying to get their videos of being forced and stuff or it's not their channel but they're in the video and they're saying I that was me being taken advantage of I want that taken down and then the site puts them through all this BS of how to take it down and it sometimes not even taking it down that that's despicable that's just why like why are you adding to the problem like that's just horrible that these sites do that and get away with it kind of in a way um so eliminating sex trafficking unfortunately i don't know if we can eliminate it as a whole but the adult industry can do way better when it comes to screening and eliminating it from that space um I, I, that's that's just fact. The next comment is by one of our favorite people on the planet, Miss Amber Lee. And um, she wrote, I would love to see more tempered conversations. We all have such varied opinions and that's so great, but we need to discuss stuff in order to see each other's sides and get resolutions. That's just fact. And that's what I was saying. When you're, when you're commenting down below or even in your personal life, when you're just commenting on someone's Twitter or stating your opinion, on someone's post or anything like that or having a conversation face to face with somebody we are not hive minded we're just not and you can't expect somebody to have the same opinion as you even if you give them all the facts and you feel like you really put up a a good defense debate on you on your side and you're like yeah but how do you still not see it it's unfortunate that we are not high minded in a way, but then it's not because how are we going to learn and grow and actually come to a resolution? So what Emberly said is a bajillion percent just needs to happen and needs we just need to be nicer to each other. We're human, we have opinions, um, we might not agree with each other, and that doesn't mean that we need to now be hateful or violent or it just doesn't. If a person's opinion really deeply bothers you on a deep level that you can't shake and it's making you feel that type of way, that just, unfortunately, just that just might be a situation where you need to just take a step back. That that person is just might not be worth it. And it's unfortunate because some of those people are at like the top and you feel like they can help and and they're stating something or being some type of way. But if you're going to go at them in a way where it's going to immediately put them on the defense and you don't know how to have a calm conversation with them because your emotions are very, like, woven up into it, and you might not be the right person to have that conversation. Um, you might want to just leave it alone and hope that that person will meet somebody that can calmly explain to them where they have gone wrong or where their opinion is muddied, you know? Um, but yeah, no, we all need to just know our limits and speak on things that we know about and feel strongly about, but do it in a respectful way where we're not immediately putting that person in defense mode because when you start going at somebody, they're, they're, they're going to close off and they're not going to listen to you. And they're just going to defend, defend, defend themselves. Look at what J.K. Rowling's doing right now. Like, she is just digging herself deeper and deeper and deeper in a hole with the BS that she has said. And people are just coming at her. She's sticking to her guns. And that's because she's getting everyone's mad at her. And she feels like she's right. So she's on the defense. She's not open or willing to learn or anything like that. Because right now she just is like, no, I'm right. Like, 
look at all these like SJWs and people that are just like all upset like look at these snow no you need to educate yourself like you know what I mean so um hopefully somebody close to her or somebody can like actually educate her on these things but yeah if you're coming from a place of like an intense emotion it might not be your place to talk to that person if you feel like you can't talk to them in like a calm educational way um so yeah no Amberly. <laughs> also check out Amberly's book uh go on her uh twitter i'll put her her thing underneath and she has an avn stars where she does like mentoring and fun stuff too and lots of videos on branding and she's just an amazing human and definitely check her out if you don't know who she is but i feel like a lot of you do know who she is so she's great <laughs> So this next comment is from one of my fans, one of my biggest supporters. I love him dearly. His name is Josh, a.k.a. Dr. Booty. <laughs> and uh, let's see what he said. He said he'd personally like to a big percentage to those who have merchandise stores and content and stuff instead of going to companies, taking such a big chunk of the money. He'd rather go to us um, to get rid of the racism fetish, which we already talked about um treat everyone equal yep you should get the same exposure and pay especially when it comes to being online um definitely that all really needs to change so there's two things i want to talk about from here and this video is probably going to be long so i do apologize but we have a lot to go through um percentages so this one's hard because i don't know what goes on in the back end and I had a pretty eye-opening experience and I won't mention the site um, they're still up and running um, that did this but they were definitely gloating on the fact that they were making all this money and taking this big percent from the girls and they were doing lots of inappropriate things and stuff and kind of just treating the girls as like just badly um and you know what <laughs> like this video if you want me to make a video on this because this is a whole other story i think that it really depends on the site so i definitely feel like i'm okay with getting a lower percentage like a 50 percent or making 60% if that site itself is bringing me traffic and new people constantly. Um, when I have to start just relying on my own fan base, um, I expect a bigger cut. If I'm bringing people to you and you're not bringing people to me, then I ex expect a bigger, a bigger cut. So to each site is like their own situation depending on like what they have um and what they're like working with as far as like traffic and how they promote and everything like are they promoting their models actively are they bringing in a bunch of new people and traffic and constantly improving their site and like doing stuff for us models then like yeah, i don't mind making like 50 60 percent um it's the sites that just don't care and have bad traffic or have random traffic because that could happen too where you just get like a bunch of like weird people from like other countries even sometimes like I'm not saying that you <laughs> not to cam people from other countries just like kind of like almost you feel like where are they sourcing this traffic from kind of situation and um, they're not helping they're not improving um they're being rude and then those companies that are taking big chunks I feel like it should around anymore uh but definitely when it comes down to it working that out but i'm not sure again how to fix that i'm not sure how to fix any of these things again we're just having an open conversation um but yeah though, that's definitely a problem and then he also said this one is a this one's a big topic this is something that has been heavy on my mind and my heart for a minute and that is the like i just said the kind of but the way a site promotes their models what do they have in place um that promotes 
their models in a way, whether that be a cam score uh, or like a contest placement. Um, like what what is that? And look, I'm I'm a, I'm a full time model on my free cams, but I'm gonna talk some shit about my free cams right now. They are just a mess. They are such a mess, and they have a lot going on. They own a lot of other sites. They own OnlyFans, um, so they kind of don't look for ways of improving the site itself and I'm just gonna come out and say it if you look at how they do cam scores and how they do the Miss MFC contest and how they do placement and you look at who have been like the top 10 that have placed since like I think it all goes all the way back to like 2006 or something like that you're gonna see it right up on the site there are none and if there are like one or two it's still not enough there are no models of color there I don't think there's ever been a black model to win Miss MFC So, editing Noah here. It seems like Lexi Star has won. Um, I don't know her personally, so I don't know. This was like a long, this was what, five years ago now? But it seems like she did pretty well for quite a few months. I would love to get in contact with her. It doesn't seem like she's in the industry anymore, though. This is 2013. Um, but yeah, she seemed to win quite a few months, and from her picture at least, she looks like a performer of color. I mean, I could be completely wrong. She could just have like a dark tan, but it doesn't look like that. Again, I don't know who she is, but um, she's the only one still, like, uh, only one. Do you see another girl? I know. Correct me if I'm wrong, please do, because what the hell? And they don't look to fix it and they don't see it as a problem because they're making money. I mean, a, a few years ago they let a girl do like a, uh, a uh, this video is monetized anyway, right? A, a Hitler show and she won. Like, what? So I don't, I don't know, it's so problematic, the, like, the way that all goes about itself. I just, I don't understand it. I really, really don't. And, like I said, they're not looking at ways to fix it or do anything about it. Um, sometimes you will see, like, some of these sites that will notice they have, like, a, a weak spot in a way. And, like, for instance, some sites have, like, weak spots where they'll, they'll be, like, there's no BBW girls winning or something. That's just, like, a basic one. So you'll see them start promoting their BBW models more. And that's honestly, like, all I ask for from MFC is if they were to realize their problem and then, like, find a way to, I don't know, like, promote better to and I'm not I it's weird because I don't want it to be unfair in the sense where it's like oh we're just gonna put all the POC models at the top like no that's not what I'm saying though that would be nice but that's not what I'm saying I don't think that is fair either um 
but I do feel like they need to sit down and come up with a way to like fix that and to see it as a problem but I don't think they see it as a problem so it would be nice to be treated equal when it comes to like different sites and stuff and but I don't think that I think that's just gonna come along I think that's gonna have to happen from a customer and model point of view I don't think a lot of these sites care enough to help with all of that I think that what's gonna happen is that if like I was saying before, ah, the moth, ah, the moth. <laughs> I'm gonna write this video like featuring a scary moth. I'm upset. Okay, um, it's gonna take these companies normalizing POC performers, and then from there, I feel like the customers in general will be less biased and then they'll start you'll start seeing POC models rise to the top. I mean that's the hope here, right? That's the goal here. Um so yeah, it's unfortunate. I do feel like and I said this in the in the Black Lives Matter video that that POC models <laughs> a million percent have to work harder and put in more hours than a lot of these um other girls and it's like the industry doesn't see us and it just it, it gets very hard and you feel very very defeating when it comes to like working when like you're sitting there and you're all dressed up and pretty and everything looks perfect you're HD you're crystal clear and there are girls that are blurry and you know what I mean not working as hard and they have like triple the amount of people that you have in your room and they're getting tipped and you're sitting there and you haven't been tipped for a whole hour and you're like okay like fuck like how do you not feel bad about yourself you shouldn't because it's not your fault but that would definitely be something that I, I would wish more sites would look into remedying and just fixing all right next one because that's another tangent okay so this next one is like a long one. Um, Miss Vera, who is super sweet, I met her at AVN. All right, she is like, hers is kind of long, so we're just gonna read it all out. She goes, I wanna see more organization. When I lived in LA, I was a community organizer and worked with coalitions and nonprofits to give political power back to the community. I love that people are passionate and protesting about what's going on, but we need strategic organization. I agree. People see the products of organization like protests, boycotts, marches, but most are unaware of the actual work that makes them real legislative and social change possible. We need clear, achievable goals, 100% coalitions of organizations and clear talking points a hundred percent we talked about this also like in the zoom meeting we need something that people can look at and swallow and realize if, if we're all over the place with our demands for lack of a better word then like people aren't going to know what to even do or give us or help us we need something clear and digestible she goes i love that people are passionate and speaking up but we need, I'm so sorry, that bug, man. But we need leaders. <laughs> but we need leaders who have experience with leading organizations and community organi organizing to understand how successful movements work. There are specific strategies and processes that make social movements successful. I think in order to see the social change we want on the scale we want, we need to have clear achievable goals, a well thought off plan, accomplishing them, and proper strategies, the way to get everyone on the same page. I 100% agree. And this kind of goes back to, like I was saying, was, um, being open to other people's opinions and teaching people and not getting all of your like emotions tangled up with like what that person may or may not be saying or doing is that we have to be more clear. We have to, as hard as it is, take some of the emotion that we are feeling out of it so we can be more strategic, so we can come up with a list of demands and something that 
people who don't understand us can start to understand us with. So no, I 100% agree, and she should be a leader of something. Like, damn, like, I might have a job for Vera, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, okay, this is one of, like, the last ones we're going to go through for this video. I have some more comments. If you guys like this kind of, like, long format reading and digesting and talking, we can do more of these. I don't mind. She said, more representations of cam models when at award shows and conventions come around. Definitely, 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 definitely. That would be amazing to just see more POC models and stuff on the billboards and I remember the first year of AVN I went to, they had this what's called like a white party where like everyone wears white and I was with a group of my friends, most of them were um, Hispanic and black and we were like hanging out, we were walking back from the smoke shop and there was the big billboard that was advertising the white party and I was like are you going to, I said to one of my friends, I was like are you going to the white party and they were like, the white party? <laughs> no and I was like wow he's like look at that poster do we look like we belong there and it made me sad because I was just like wow is it literally a white party <laughs> like am I allowed like to go like it's not funny but like shit like it's yeah definitely more and more like trophy girls and just like less uh, race less racist categories that to give POC models a chance of actually taking home awards. I won't mention who, but I have a, a mainstream adult model friend. <laughs> it's like, I'm trying to avoid the P word. Um, and she has been doing this for such a long time, so many scenes. Like, she's so good, she's very popular, and she was so upset that like it's so hard for her to win any type of awards like she doesn't she barely wins anything and she works so hard and she you would think that she's like tippity top top and in reality it's like these award shows don't pay her no mind and like don't give her attention when it comes to like her actual like her success like it, it's it was really messed up and she ended up um pretty much leaving the industry like she still does stuff but she pretty much is like not a part of it anymore because of it and it, it really sucks. Interview every model however the video is um, edited and has representation that there are barely any. Yeah so she's talking about right here um, where you get interviewed on the red carpet and then they just like edit you out and then when you watch the video back it's just like all of these like white adult models and you're like we just I thought we had a nice little interview like what happened it just again makes you just feel like quite shitty when it comes down to it because you're like why am I not why am I being deleted but yeah um the sh she's talking about the billboards the signs should have more POC and more fetish 100% um yeah more categories I just mentioned that the algorithm for rotating featured models 100% yeah, it needs to be random, so it definitely, like, that would be a really nice way of them fixing, like, the algorithm and, like, that whole concept of making it more randomized, where maybe have, like, the top ten models at the top of the page, but then, like, anyone else underneath that should be, like, randomized and given a chance to get seen. I can't tell you how many times that I'll get a customer that comes into my room and they'll be like, Ooh, are you new? I haven't seen you before. And I'm like, I'm so far from new. I'm not new at all. I'm like, no. Like, welcome to my room. Make sure you favorite me so you get notifications. Because, like, they don't see me. Because, like, I'll be, like, in the fifth row or in the middle or something. And, like, I, oh, my God. I, I don't even know. I don't even want to know how bad it is, in a way, for models that are, like, on, like, the second page or on, like, the bottom. Like, they don't get any visibility, and then no wonder why these girls quit and then feel bad about themselves or feel like it was something that they did. Like, how are you ever supposed to feel secure doing this job if, like, you can't even afford to get the right lighting in your room because, like, you're at the bottom? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you, no one wants to feel at the bottom of anything. Like, it definitely should be more randomized. Uh, maybe, like, randomize it like every hour or something like that and like that would that would be nice that would be very nice 
and they can still do things for instance like um, when it comes to like your actual cam score like maybe girls with a better cam score that's where they can push more traffic to but in reality if they're randomizing it and you're next to a girl that's getting pushed traffic to because she has a better score than you but you're next to her on the page and you used to be like at the bottom or the middle you might get people that trickle down from her room that will see you and be like hi like you know what I mean and that, that would be really cool so yeah no definitely that would be awesome I wish they would do something like that um more black models with tattoos and colored hair that would be really cool do you guys realize that you barely see that we're like told like not to get tattoos and stuff like that I mean most models in general are told not to get tattoos but when it comes to like alternative models and all of that like there are so many alternative adult models that are just white and Asian and mostly just Asian girls when it comes to Asians because they're all fed that's a whole nother thing that I can't even speak on because I am not Asian it'd be actually kind of cool any Asian cam models out there that want to talk about some of like the problems and racism and weird stuff that you face it would be great to like even if we had to do like a zoom style where I like edit you next to me and have a nice conversation about it all because that upsets me and that's just not even like a thing that I'm in like you know like that sometimes I'll see some of like what's going on and with that type of racism and I'm just like damn like I, I when I talk about POC I'm talking about like all the colors except for white like if you're Asian if you're Native American if you're from India if you're Brazilian if you're Hispanic at all if you're black like all POC models need better better respect and better representation and like to be less fetishized like it's ridiculous but yeah no definitely that'd be really cool to see like uh, more black models with like pink hair and like tattoos and piercings like they exist there's just not enough <laughs> like you know so it's like that would be really awesome or them getting casted more in like alternative roles and stuff like that so I'm gonna end it there um sorry this video is so long I feel like we got into a lot I would love to see lots of chat and questions and things in the comments so please 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 comment on anything anything how are you feeling like how does this make you feel what changes do you want to see what opinions do you have um and let's talk about it if I get enough then or newer things and stuff 100% we can make another video like this that even if it's long like let's keep these open conversations going I don't care if these videos get demonetized I really don't because I feel like they need to happen they need to as long as it doesn't get taken down that's fine just <laughs> you know what I mean I just feel like these things need to be put out into the world and maybe clicked on by people that don't know what's going on you know what I mean or don't have a full understanding and to see that we have all of these problems and to be aware that these things exist so a hundred percent let's get chatting um if you guys don't want to say things publicly you can always hit me up on Instagram or Twitter put them like next to me Instagram Twitter <laughs> And, uh, yeah, reach out. Um, I also have my email on my About Me section. Like, whatever. Whatever floats your boat, whatever makes you feel more comfortable. I would love to hear your thoughts and feelings on all of this. So, I love you. Please stay safe. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. Resources down below as a usual. Places you can donate. Places you can call. Things you can do. Um, keep up the, the energy here. Because it's, it's good energy that we need. And, um, yeah. I love you guys so much, so much. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. See you later. I love you. Goodbye. Wearing a mask is sexy. Wearing a mask is hot. Wearing a mask makes your butt look better than doing a million squats. Wearing a mask is cute. Wearing a mask is cool. Wearing a mask is for people who did above average in school. I can't mask the feeling when you are wearing a mask. What turns me on is listening to scientific facts A mask is the accessory to turn a 6 into a 10 Cause stopping viral spread makes me spread my legs, amen Look how flexible I am